So this area is looking a bit messy. In reality, the next step is leveling the humps and bumps that are in here and moving them into these raspberry stems and then it's a big clear up weeding and leveling uh, we'll get rid of these bits and pieces of plastic and metal hopefully and um, we can see there that the bluebells are doing really well come on quite a lot since I looked at them just about four or five days ago and all of the raspberry canes have got really nice buds on them so I'm hopeful that's going to be a great crop um, we've got quite a lot of remnants of the old plot here some wire still I can see and we've got some bricks and rubble and a rather rotten raised bed uh, actually it's a pallet top we'll see what we can do with that whether it's something I can rescue or not and my plan is to keep the level of this raspberry area higher than the rest of the plot and I'm thinking at the moment to have a wooden barrier all the way along this and see if that uh, can retain the extra soil and material and hopefully it will look reasonable. I'm desperate to get onto this area of digging. Um, reality is it's just too wet and I'm going to have to be patient. But um, I really want to get the bushes in, the fruit bushes, gooseberries and the rhubarb. Um, but it's certainly not happening at the moment. And you can see there my lake or should I call it a river um, which is just the water draining and that's sitting on the clay pan and will take some considerable time to drain away and that's all I've got left to dig um, that's probably a couple of shifts of digging and I could get uh, back in control uh, the rest of this plot um, just covered really keeping it on hold, trying to keep the weeds from shooting up whilst I finish the other area of soil. And then I can work into this. I've done a couple of patches. It won't take me too long. And you can see just down here, if you don't cover it, what starts to recover. And there's grass and dock leaves uh, in amongst that, which uh, is what I'm trying to pull out and prevent having to deal with in the long term. The pear tree which I gave a winter wash this week um, and I've pruned is looking good and there's buds starting to break now on that tree and hopefully I've done all I can to make it a successful season and the fruit tree grease that I've put on um, looks to be well positioned and ready to prevent any pests. <clears throat> so I've got a few leaks left in this area that will be coming out in the next week or two. The last leaks of the season for our Sunday lunch. And I've got a lot of strawberries which are just seeing the winter through and will ultimately either go into the polytunnel in the baskets that I've prepared or uh, into some spare pots and I'll probably end up sharing a lot of those with people um, who haven't got any strawberries and these if you remember are the raspberries that when I was digging out the new area I just couldn't part with them they were rooted and I felt like they could be used by someone if not me uh, and I can see in there some really nice shoots coming out of the bases of those plants. And yeah, I think we'll get some survivors from that. So the pumpkin patch, as I like to call it, is just dormant really. Um, the strawberries are along the left hand side here are just seeing the winter through. I've covered that with wood chips in the pathways, uh, which is helping. 
those covers have come off a couple of times in the wind but we're keeping on top of it uh, quite a few stones on it at the moment keeping it in place but that in reality is just going to sit there and uh, I'll probably just tidy it up from time to time but it's relatively dormant at this time of year I'm just going to swing round to this pile of twigs and branches and that uh, is what I've taken out from all the pruning I've been doing and all the clearing around the raspberries and that's quite a mound of material which I will burn at some point in time so the beds are also relatively dormant there's still so much water here you can see this path particularly suffers from pools of water and again I've been repeatedly recovering these beds trying to protect them from losing all their nutrients through leaching um, we've got some Russian cow there which we're still feeding from which is doing really well and the various winter vegetables on this bed including the swede that is an amazing swede they're starting to get some struggles with slugs now I'm going to have to think about that um, still got some strawberries to pull out there and I will take those out because they weren't particularly successful in the beds uh, some cabbage which is hearting up again that will give us a few meals and it's interesting that these cabbage which were really late starting are looking the healthiest now and of course they're not suffering so much from slug damage as the older ones were the Caballonero cow is a uh, strange shape but uh, again still providing food for us and uh, we'll be pulling that out at the beginning of the new season still getting a few sprouts not too many and the red cabbage again periodically uh, using those when we fancy some two beds here that i've just prepared ready for next season um, just holding out really and uh, this used to have garlic in and ironically we seem to have a whole bunch of garlic bulb coming through there in a couple of clumps we'll just leave that and let it do its thing the red currants have been pruned and are ready for the season there's a whole bunch of stinging nettles down here I'll try and get that out relatively early before it starts to bite your back and uh, clear that out that will help the compost bins which I turned this week just doing their thing and this is the empty bin that I'm gonna start to fill today when that manure arrives so the main cropping area the beds pretty much dormant got to get through this winter and wet weather before we can start taking the covers off and just starting to get activation in the beds so the black current area again massive amount of pruning went on there and buds starting to come through now um, and looking really well and hopefully if the plan goes correctly then all the growth will go into those shoots and we'll start to see a better plant than we've had in the last few years which has really not been very productive I'll continue clearing this area out the apple tree in that bed is pruned and hopefully again we'll have a goodly amount of apples from that it was good last year one of the um, plants that's been revealed by clearing this area out is this gooseberry and it's leafed up most years but not really borne much fruit so I'm hoping that the exposure to light will mean that it does an awful lot better I've just got a few pots of potatoes left and we'll have those out I've been taking them out successfully for the last few weeks and getting a good two or three meals out of each bucket that's come to an end now really 
and this is the overspill area which I'll still get quite a lot of material from where I'm digging out the raspberries I'm sure um, and that will continue to come down here and raise the level of this and I can see lots of celandines in the bank there um, when they flower it'll be beautiful they come out as a yellow flower and uh, who knows one day I might try and get control of that bank under there it's not on my priority list at the moment there is an enormous gooseberry here um, that just doesn't bear fruit and I suspect it's because of the damp and the lack of light um, we'll see over time whether we can get that to work for us but again that's not a big priority for me down in the compost area we're suffering from a lot of moisture on the ground um, and the gooseberry bushes are really starting to shoot now and we can see leaves starting to come through I'm really anxious to get those into the ground but the weather's holding me back now the rhubarb is really flourishing here um, I've got two big trays of strawberries this one was Cambridge favorite and this one red scarlet so I'll be using those or some of them in the polytunnel in the baskets and around here again really good rhubarb and these two compost bins have had plenty of water on them I didn't water them when I put this compost material in here thinking that they're going to get a good old splashing and that's been the case so that's good news saves me a job and when I filled up the empty compost bin that I showed you earlier I'll be topping these two up with the next delivery during this really bad wet weather we've been keeping the chickens in the garden uh, they enjoy that we enjoy it until they start destroying the plants and then Mrs K wants them back over here um, I want to do some repairs here before we get them back and we're getting some water come through the roof uh, need to work out what's happened looking up there it looks like some of the felt ridge that I put in it started to break down in the middle and I'll need to work out what to do and that's on my list to have a good look at it today the Bramley apple trees and the Victoria plum there in the corner they've had all the appropriate treatment they've had a winter wash they've had grease put around the trunks and they've been pruned and hopefully we'll get some fruit from them this year and these jostaberry bushes are budding up now and the buds are breaking into leaf and I've got a plan to just clear a bit away from beneath them and perhaps put a membrane down to stop this constant weed problem around the base of them um, it's an idea that's developing in my mind the black currants at the back of the shed heavily pruned and hopefully will develop in the same way as the other black currants and once again I've got an infestation of stinging nettles I'm thinking I might use some of the green from those stinging nettles in a bucket of water to make some feed well amazingly the sun's starting to come out and it's not going to last long but we'll enjoy it while it's here I love the fact during the sunshine that these red currant bushes have like an orange bark that peels away which is fantastic to look at we had a break-in in the shed a few things stolen which resulted in me clearing it out of my tools none of my tools were stolen fortunately it's a hazard that happens and you just need to let some time pass before you get things back in the shed and get working again you can see that door which I've patched up many times 
is really suffering from having been broken into. Um, I learned a long time ago that the best way to deal with the shed is to leave it unlocked because if somebody wants to get in they'll just break the door down and I was constantly repairing the door and in reality it's just not worth it so you take the risk you put tools in that you're not too precious about and from time to time it happens it's sad but it is a reality and I try not to let it affect me too much this uh, old galvanized tank has got dahlias in it and I'm just keeping them protected with these covers and there's a few garlic in the front which is a bit of an odd combination but I'm just gonna let it be and that's interesting because we seem to have a shoot there and hopefully that combination of a, a little bit of water coming in here but generally keeping it protected from the worst of the weather um, will be successful. You can see the raspberries from this lower level. I'm thinking in an ideal world, I'd like a path through there. I'm gonna have to deal with this change in level, but it would be nice to come through the gate, turn left, walk down to the polytunnel we'll see what we can plan and develop and so in this winter sunshine the plots looking ready in the main for the next season and the new space that I took over well it certainly feels like I'm getting on top of it and making some good progress when you take on a new area like I did last summer for this particular plot it's a long-term plan and step by step it comes together and I'm looking forward to that being a dedicated fruit garden that is relatively low maintenance and productive and we'll enjoy that so the main thing on my targets for today is getting that manure in and into the empty compost bin. I think the amount of time I get on here today will be limited. Uh, if that rain hits when the weather forecast says it will. So I'm going to get on and get that over here and get going. Class February, or at least the end of February, as being the new April. One minute, heavens open, and now beautiful sunshine.
but probably getting on for two cubic meters but I'll level that off now it doesn't need any water on top it's wet enough it's been in that trailer out in the open for a while I'll cover it over with the blue cover and that's one more bin ready to rot down and you'd be amazed how quickly that will get down to about half that level once it's warmed up and started composting. I do hope you enjoyed the video today if you did click the subscribe button click the like button and if you want updates from me each time I upload a video click the bell and select all I do hope you have a great day